Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today we will recreate an effect uh, you might know from Harry Potter, uh, the Death Eater appearance effect. Um, or let's say it's just an appearance effect when fluid hits on a surface and an object uh, is appearing um, out of this. Uh, yeah, and for that we are using Krakatoa, of course, and Fume Effects for the fluid simulation. And we will also use some occlusion, but this time it goes a little bit deeper, uh, but you will see after all. Okay, first of all, we go here on the timeline settings. Uh, that's all correct. Leave it as NTSC in the frame rate and increase the animation time up to 400 frames. Okay, and then after that, before we start, Go to Customize, Unit Settings, and then choose Meters in the Metric section. Go to System Unit Setup, and then choose 10 cm per System Unit Scale. Alright. So, first of all, I want to include the object that will appear. And I chose from Mixamo. Mixamo is a platform you have access to if you have an Adobe Creative Cloud account. And there you can go for tons of nice looking motion captured movements of characters. You can upload your own character, for example, create with the Autodesk character generator, or you can just use a default character or a default body. And that's what I did. Go to import. That's the name, by the way. Click open. Okay, here it is. And the animation looks like this. Okay, when I generated this, I chose the frame rate of 60 frames, so I can expand this in the timeline. When I have a lower frame rate, like 30 frames, then I can scale the time up to 200%. Right here, at frame 230. Okay, now I switch over to create a Fume of X simulation. Go here, and then create a few of X grid. Yeah, I guess I need to change the dimensions. Uh, increase the length, of course. Hmm. Maybe something like 15. Yeah, the height um, 8. The width, let's say 10. Okay, and now move it backwards. All right. But before I go to the settings for the simulation, I will create our emitter. Go to the helpers, the Fume of X section, and just create a simple source. It would be good if the diameter would fit onto the body um, at the starting position, of course. Let's move it up a little bit in the middle of the body. And now change the diameter here. Yeah. Let's just say 1.2 meters. Now I switch to the side view. Go here and press to the left. And now we will create our path. Go here to the splines in the second section. Go to line and then create something like this. And it will end up here, just a little bit above the ground. Okay, I will change something because I think it's a little bit too curvy. I guess this will be fine. You can do a much more complex path. Um, feel free to do that. For now, showcasing the effect, uh, I chose a simple thing um, like this. Go back into the left view or just press L on your keyboard. Select your simple source, go to animation, constraints, path constraint, 
and choose your line. We pick the end frame at the end of the timeline and put it over here, maybe at frame 80. Okay, two things. I need to change the position of the first vertex so that at the beginning our simple source will be in bounds. And the next thing is if you select your simple source again, go here to the motion tab, scroll down and choose follow and choose the Z axis. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Oh. Well, anyways, um, besides that it will look much more boring, um, I can't help myself but deleting this vertex as well. Okay, but now everything's fine. Go back to your simple source, set some keyframes for the active parameter. Just over here, when it hits the ground. Okay, that's good for now. Now it's time to go back to the perspective mode and take a look into the Fume FX settings. Okay, first of all, we need to change the channels. Include the velocity channel. That's very important for our particle conversion later in Stoke. Scroll down here in the simulation tab. Disable fuel. We don't need that. And enable or include the channel for temperature. So temperature gets simulated as well. But why I'm doing this, I will explain later. Okay, now we change this here in the boundless section so we won't have any clippings for the simulation. Choose both for X, choose both for Y and choose Z plus for fluids above the grid but not beneath the grid because this will be our ground and the ground shall be a blocking side so go here in the simulation tab a little bit downwards and choose in the section for blocking sides at Z minus Z. Okay, and the next thing will be um, for a smoother simulation, go to maximum simulation steps and increase it up to three. Leave everything as it is by default and delete the value for gravity. We don't need any gravity here. And in the velocity damping, increase value up to 0.25. Anything else is okay right here. Okay, and each other value will be all right as well, except the turbulence noise. And yeah, we will go to that right now. Okay, first of all, I will increase the frames for this turbulence up to a very high value, like I would say 70 the small detail amount up to 0.7 and the x value which is constrained to all the other dimensions of course um, will be increased up to 0.5 because the turbulence inside the simulation looks very nice on fluids but we don't want to keep them so strong the entire simulation so what we are gonna do Yes, yeah, you remember, I chose to export the temperature channel. So with the temperature values, we can tell the simulation that spots with high temperatures have also high noises. And how can we do that? We will create an effector. The effector will create a channel and we already give it a name. I would call it temp noise and this channel will test the input data from the temperature, but only from the value of 1 up to 100, that's okay. And the input type is of course temperature. And our scalar will be 0.25 and our output value will be reversed. So just go here in this output value graph and flip the values. The maximum value on the y axis is 0.25, that's the scalar. And the maximum value on the x axis is one, which is determined 
down here. And this is also a scaling because we get all the, all the information from the temperature channel but only in the range between 1 and 100. And this will be scaled down to this range and it will be multiplied with 0.25 and put into this behavior, this graph behavior, of course. And then after all, we just need to go here in this turbulence effector field and choose our channel. Okay, everything's fine here. Last but not least, before we take a first look at this, we go here and include our FumeFX simple source. Okay, that's a very big mess. Um, sorry for that. Uh, I will select all of them and put them into a new layer. And I will just call it simulation. Okay, it's time to take a look at this. Select the FumeFX object and go here to GPU viewport display. Hmm, okay, that's not so nice. Um, we definitely need to scale up this scene. Disable the GPU viewport and go here. Mm, I would say it must be at least four times as big. So double up each dimension, put it somewhere here. I would say select your path then, then I would recommend to change your pivot like here in the zero 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 spot so you can easily scale it up for 200% you see below here mm, no all right okay go back into the fume of X grid and it also needs a bigger height um, yeah I would say 15 mm -hmm. yeah that's good enough I would say and okay let's run the simulation again okay it's still not perfect um, I would recommend to change something something with the simple source settings Okay, it definitely needs a much bigger scale in the turbulence of the emitter itself. So how about 20? The directional speed must be about one, so 10 times bigger. Yeah, that could be nice. Okay, I tested around a little bit off screen and yeah, that's what I changed. Um, I changed the directional value for the simple source to 0.2 and the radial velocity down to 0.05. And right here, I decreased the velocity damping down to 0.1, the turbulence strength down to 0.1 as well. Yeah, and um, I guess that's it. I will re-simulate this because I think this is very nice. Um, yeah but I want to increase the resolution. Uh, so I will re-simulate this off screen, actually with a lower spacing value, because this will increase the resolution. Yeah, but this will also take much more time. Yeah, something like this. And also I will, yeah, I will simulate this uh, only to frame 300, I would say. That's good enough for us. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we are back. And this is how the simulation will look like. Yeah. I like the impact here on the floor. And the diffusion or the turbulence in the fluid is also very nice. And I would say if you if you look at frame 160, this would be a good endpoint. Um, for all the particles in the fluid. Um, so particles get emitted until frame 80, as we determined with our FUMFX simple source, uh, which ends to be active at this point. And yeah, I would say um, it would be good if they last for 
80 frames. Yeah, and how do we do that? Um, yeah, of course, we use Stoke to convert the simulation into particles to get it renderable for Krakatoa later. And this could be done by going here to Stoke and use the first option, create Stoke particle reflow simulator. And our Stoke object is there. And because our FumeVex grid was selected uh, while I created the Stoke object, the FumeVex grid is already the distribution source and our velocity field source. Okay, there's not so much to do for us right now. Of course, we would say delete the dead particles after 80 frames. And yeah, I would say give, give them a variation of 10 frames. And also we need to get here to the edit birth magma. Press I on your keyboard, select the input field, drag a wire into empty space. So the position channel appears and here you select the FumeVex grid. Okay, um, all the other channels could be deleted. These are all the channels that FumeVex probably could have, but we only need the smoke channel and the smoke channel will be our output into the density channel. Um, select everything, copy that, and now go to the edit per step magma, paste. All right, so our channel, which is initialized here, will be updated in here. Okay, select the density channel that we just created uh, for the channels that we use in our output. All right, um, then you only need to choose the folder for the cache files. And of course, we have to increase the number of particles. Also, we use emit until frame 80. So we see the entire number. I would say we go to the Stoke partitioning dialog later um, to get a total amount of 50 million particles. That would be good enough. So um, let's say we would create for each partition a number of almost 10 million particles. So we still need five partitions. And yeah, then we achieve the perfect look for that. Okay, um, everything is set up. I'm totally fine with each settings um, because there, yeah, there was not so much to do. And let's go here to the Stoke tab, open the Stoke particle partitioning dialog. Yeah, this is okay. And yeah, we need five partitions. Okay, and let's run this and see you in a second. All right, we are done and this is how it looks. Now, um, maybe I should disable the fume effects. Okay, that's nice. Um, yeah, but first of all, I want to change that view. Um, let's go here, 1% of all the particles in the viewport, every nth particle and large dots and not velocities. We can also change the color. This should be very dark, I would say. Um, how about something about this? The value, the brightness value of 15 and yeah. Okay, let's take a first look. But first of all, we go here, the light. We will add an Omni light, but we do that in another layer. And this will be called light and cam. Uh, this goes back into the simulation. All right. And here we go and create an Omni light somewhere here, I would say. Just move it a bit more to the side. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Okay, let's take a first look before we render. Um, open your render window and and check the override background color. And just use a very bright gray, something like this. Mm, 200, I would say. Yep. Okay, and let's go. Okay, this is very nice. Um, 
I will play around with the settings here. Um, this time I avoid to choose the absorption mode. That's all fine. I will just try another light density pass. How about this one? Okay, this could be the right one. Um, yeah, just leave it as it is. And now, how do we do this with our character? And how shall we let our character appear? Yeah, just disable the simulation tab, or the simulation layer, I would say. And choose both mesh groups because our standard character has two different mesh objects and all the other helpers are the rig helpers. Both mesh objects are now selected. So go to Krakatoa and choose create PRT surface. First off, I would recommend to reduce the particle count so we can scroll through the timeline. Yeah, and it's all fine, I would say. Yes, also change the color in here. And now we take a look. Okay, it looks good. I mean, we definitely need to do something for the occlusion because you see some back face particles here. Okay, that's very grainy and very pixelish. Um, but I will go back and increase the particle count up to 100,000 and check it out. Okay, that could be nice, um, but yeah, first of all, we should do the animation for the appearance of our object. And by the way, I think the animation should start a bit later, so we don't miss this part here. We want our character to appear after the impact of our fluid simulation. And that will happen around here in frame 70 or 80. Um, but let's check again. Yes, um, we definitely need our character to start its movement um, a bit later. So I just selected all the objects. I disabled all the other layers and here's only our character and move it in the timeline for 80 frames. Yes, here we go. Next thing will be an animated texture on our object. And how do we do that? You first need to select the object, the better surface. Go here, editable poly, click yes. And now it's time to add a UV map a modifier. And this is called UV map, UVW map, I mean. Yeah, and this is okay. Um, yeah, it's already applied. And we can see this right now. If we create a material, a standard material is okay. It's just fine for us. A gradient ramp as a texture map, rotated to 90 degrees. And the W value, apply this on our object and then go here, default shading. So you see, okay, that's perfectly. Our map reaches from toes to head. All right. Um, same should be done with our other object. Yeah, just go here. Also create a UVW map and apply the same material onto this. Okay, that's fine. All right. Now that our character has in both his uh, objects, his joints and his surface, the same material or the same texture map, we can animate this texture map. Just add another handle, change the color to entirely black. And here change the color to entirely white. Go to frame 80 create keyframes, right click, edit properties and give it a position of 99. And here at the other handle, give it a position of, I would say 97. And yeah, then I would say go to frame 150, short before all the fluid particles disappear and then change the position to one and with a distance of two 
give it a position of three. And let's take a look. Okay, that's very nice, uh, but there's still two ch things to change. Um, first of all, delete the first keyframe and stretch our map a little bit. Because at the beginning there's already white visible on the object and at the end there's still a little black area. We don't want this. We want our character to change from entirely black to entirely white. So this is very easy. Just change the size or the tiling of our map. Uh, maybe let's say 9.3. Let's take a look again. Here it's entirely black and now it changes to entirely white in the end. Okay, but it still looks a little bit boring. So go back to your map, scroll down and put some noise on it. Maybe something like 0.33 and you can change the size a little bit. Yeah, also choose the method of fractal. Maybe the amount should be smaller, something like this. The size should also change a little bit. Very huge, I would say. Okay, I think this is already very nice. The point of our texture is that it will represent the visibility of our particles on the object. And this could be done very simple. Just go here, where we have our surface object and add a magma modifier. Okay, add a texture map. Scroll down here to our use texture map. Convert, break out. And this will represent, or the grayscale will represent our density. So choose output density and also Go to the logic section, choose equal operator, set it into an upper channel, the selection upper channel, of course, so we can delete all of them with the Krakatoa delete modifier. Okay, take a look at this. Now we disable. Okay, I found a mistake. Um, you need to go back to your texture and stretch it a little bit more. Something like 0.8. And now it should work. Okay, that's fine. All right, now we have the particle selection and uh, deleting of the particles to show our build up of our object represented by particles. But it's much more important now to get particle occlusion and also backface particles, which will be shown while other particles on the front side are lower from the view of the camera so that the front side wouldn't cover up the back side while it's building up. How could we do that? First of all, hide the default layer and go here and we create another magma modifier. Press I or an input geometry and pick both meshes. Press Ctrl C just to create a camera from your current view. And then we will create an input object. And this is of course our camera. So we get the occlusion towards the perspective of the camera. Okay, drag a wire into empty space. So we get our position of the camera. Go here and select world space for the coordinates of our particles in the position channel and then subtract subtract the position of the particles from the position of the camera. Normalize because we only want the direction of this ray and then we will create an intersect ray object. The ray intersection is also very useful and to be sure that no particles which are very close to the surface. Uh, they are not entirely on the surface, but sometimes they are a little bit behind the surface or in front of the surface. To be sure that we avoid that, I will add to the position of our particle as the ray origin a little, little tiny offset towards the camera. So go to normalize, multiply 
and yeah, with a very small factor of 0.001, add this to the position of our particle. Yeah, and then we use this as the ray origin. And now we will check if from the ray origin towards our direction, this here, if there will be an ray intersection by geometry or by faces of these meshes. And in this case, we put the result of this operator in the selection channel and then our Krakatoa delete modifier will delete our selection. And now we will compare this. Okay, much better, especially here on this hand. But the problem in this case is that the hand or the arm of our object is in front of particles, no matter if the arm itself is still invisible. How can we get rid of that? Very easy. We can solve this by checking the color of the surface of our geometry so we know that the geometry is visible or not. And we do that by press add face query, go back here. Yeah, from the face query, we need the information of our texture channel at the point of the surface of an intersecting geometry. Create of course, we will take the same texture map again. Yeah, instance, of course. And we use texture coordinate input and use these texture coordinates from our intersections on mono value, so we don't need to do a breakout. Sure, we will check if, if it's visible or not. Go to the logic tab, take the greater operator. If the values are greater than zero, this would lead to particles who shall be deleted by the Krakatoa delete modifier. And how do we combine these two outputs? Very simple. Drag a wire into empty space, choose logical switch operator. If array intersection is valid, if true, then we shall take a look at this. So both conditions are true in this case if our switch operator chooses this argument and if not, it should get a false value or zero boolean. And in this case, we would already have this in our is valid output from our intersect ray operator. And now we take this output for our selection channel, go back and take a further look. Okay. I go out of the camera to see it from the side. Just look at here, at, at his hips. Still particles are visible, but now they disappear because we start to see parts of the hand and the arm. And that's why we don't have any invisible spots while the build up and we have no back face particles. Go back, take another look. Yeah. Okay, and the next thing would be that all the things that happen here should also be applied onto the particles in our fluid simulation. So enable the fluid simulation, take this magma that we just designed, put it here on a particle. So we will copy that into our PRT loader for the fluid simulation create another character delete modifier and let's take a look. Okay, that's not so well visible. Um, yeah, then I would recommend to increase the particle count on the PRT surface object, maybe up to 1 million or let's say 2 million. Go back and watch again. Maybe here. Okay, let's let's take a look. Okay, I guess I need to uh, look for the perfect settings for um, 
for the light density and the particle count and uh, yeah I will stop here and be back after I found these settings. All right I think this looks good right now. Um, well I changed the light density pass to a value of 3 and minus 3. Then I went into the magma modifier fire and yeah I got rid of this because that makes no sense because we don't deal with particles of the geometry but particles which are around the object um, from the fluid. And here I only changed um, the density so I divided it by 4 as the amount of particles is very high. 1 million. Okay and it looks like this at the end. That's all fine. Alright, uh, I will set up a camera. Um, maybe it will fly around in a circle or something uh, and render the scene. And yeah, I guess that's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.